Hello students, welcome back again. We were discussing about presenting different type of motion through graphical method. Graphical method gives a convenient way to represent some basic information about different events. And in the previous module, we had represented the distance time relationship through graphical method and we had calculated the velocity of an object which is executing a uniform motion. Today, we will discuss and we will represent the relation between velocity and time on a graph paper. So, let us have a look. So, here what we will do? We will represent the velocity of an object in the y axis and the time in the x axis. So, we will choose a suitable measurement for that. Now, dear students, as we were talking about velocity and time, an object can execute uniform velocity. That means, the object may be moving in a uniform motion or uniform velocities. So, how that velocity of that object changes with respect to time, we will represent it on the graph. So, the first graph if you see, when the object is moving in a uniform velocity. That means, if you look at the graph, if we assume here that the object is moving at a velocity of 40 meter per second. So, when we are observing, let us take at the first second, the first instance, here the time interval we have taken as 1 second. So, at the first second if you observe that velocity is 40 meter per second. And if you observe at the second instant also, that velocity is also 40 meter per second. And if you observe after another second also, at the third second, the velocity of the object also remains the same that is 40 meter per second and so also at the fourth second. So, what we conclude from here that the object is executing as a uniform velocity. It is moving in a uniform velocity in a straight line. Of course, we are representing motion of object in a straight path in a straight line. So, here the object is moving with a uniform velocity. Now, the, if you look at the graph, how does it look like? You will see a straight line. The graph is a straight line parallel to the time axis or the x axis. So, we can conclude here that if an object is moving with uniform velocity with respect to time, then the graph will be parallel, will be a straight line parallel to the time axis or x axis. Now, we can also calculate from this graph the distance travelled by that object in a particular interval of time. So, we know that object is going with a uniform velocity. So, how can we calculate the distance travelled by that particular object in a particular interval of time? As we know, the product of velocity and time will give us the distance travelled by the object. So, let us try to solve how much distance that particular object has travelled between a time duration. Let us assume that we want to calculate the distance travelled by that object in a interval of 1 second to the third second. That means, within that 2 second, the time interval is 2 second. So, we will do a draw perpendicular at time t 1 and time t 2 to the straight line A c and B d are the perpendicular line at the time t 1 and t 2. So, in order to calculate the distance, if you calculate the area under the time axis as well as the velocity, the area enclosed in A B C D will give us the distance travelled by the object. As we know, the velocity is given as 40 meter per second 
and the time duration is given to us as 2 second. So, simply what we will do that if we take the distance travelled by that object as s, then we will calculate it as sc into your cd. The height of sc gives us the velocity and cd gives us the time interval. So, sc is 40 meter per second multiplied by the time duration is your 2 second because t2 is 3 second, t1 is 1 second. So, 3 minus 2 that will give us 2 second. Now, if you uh, multiply it, the answer comes as 80 meter. That means we can say the object undergoing a uniform velocity within a time period of 2 second it will travel a distance of 80 meter. I hope it is clear to all of you. So, this is how we can represent when an object is moving with uniform velocity. Now, another situation comes when the object is undergoing a uniform acceleration. That means, the velocity is not remaining constant throughout. Rather, the velocity is changing uniformly in a given interval of time that is what we call as uniformly accelerated motion. Let us take one example. Here if you see let us assume a car is moving in a straight line and we are recording the odometer at a different time interval. The time interval that we have taken here is 5 second. So, the time interval will be 5 second. So, after each 5 second we will record the velocity of that car in meter per second as well as we have recorded in kilometer per hour. So, at initial the car is at rest. So, the time is 0 as it is the reference origin. So, the velocity is also 0. After 5 second the velocity is given to us as 2.5 meter per second or we can say in terms of kilometer per hour it is 9 kilometer per hour. Similarly, if you see at the 10th second the velocity is 5 meter per second. At the 15th second the velocity is given as 7.5 meter per second and at the 20th second it is 10 meter per second. At the 25th second it is 12.5 meter per second and at the 30th second it is 15 meter per second. Now, from this data you can know that in an equal interval of time the velocity of the object is increasing uniformly. If you subtract any con two consecutive velocity suppose at the fifth second and the tenth second 5 minus 2.5 gives us 2.5 meter per second. That means, in each interval the velocity of the object is increasing by a factor of 2.5 meter per second. So, if we plot this in a graph, our graph will look something like this. And what you observe here? That the graph of an object moving with uniform acceleration is a straight line passing through the origin. Now, from this particular graph, we can also calculate the distance travelled by that object. That means, when an object is executing uniform acceleration in that time also we can calculate the distance travelled by that particular object. In our reference we had taken a car. So, in a given time interval we will try to find out the distance travelled by that car which is uniformly accelerated in the time interval of from 10th second to the 20th second. And for that we need to consider the area which is enclosed under A, B, C, E which is nothing but the area of the rectangle A, B, C, D plus the area of the triangle A, D, E. So, let us see suppose we will take the point A here the velocity is nothing but here as we have represented the velocity in kilometer per hour. So, the corresponding velocity at time 10 
इज योर एटीन किलोमीटर पर आवर एंड द वेलोसिटी कॉरस्पॉन्डिंग टू द ट्वेंटी एथ सेकेंड इज योर थर्टी सिक्स किलोमीटर पर आवर सो वी नीड टू कन्वर्ट इट फर्स्ट इन टू मीटर पर सेकेंड एज द टाइम इज गिवेन इन सेकेंड सो इफ यू कन्वर्ट थर्टी सिक्स किलोमीटर पर आवर इन टू मीटर पर सेकेंड दैट विल गिव अस टेन मीटर पर सेकेंड एंड इफ यू कन्वर्ट एटीन किलोमीटर पर आवर इन टू मीटर पर सेकेंड दैट विल गिव अस द वैल्यू ऑफ फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड सो नाउ लेट्स सी विल फर्स्ट कैलकुलेट द एरिया ऑफ दिस रेक्टेंगल देन विल कैलकुलेट द एरिया ऑफ द ट्राइंगल सो फॉर द एरिया ऑफ द रेक्टेंगल लेट्स एज्यूम इट इज एज एस वन देन विल हैव ए बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय बी सी सो ए बी इफ यू टेक इट इज जीरो टू योर बी दैट इज विल योर फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड सो फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड मल्टीप्लाइड बाय बी सी ट्वेंटी माइनस टेन दैट विल गिव अस टेन सेकेंड सो यू विल गेट इट एज फिफ्टी मीटर सो नाउ वंस वी कैलकुलेटेड द एरिया ऑफ द रेक्टेंगल नाउ लेट्स कैलकुलेट द एरिया ऑफ द ट्राइंगल ए डी ई सो लेट्स रिप्रेजेंट इट एज एस टू विच विल बी इज इक्वल टू हाफ इन टू ए डी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई डी ई सो योर ए डी इज नथिंग बट द टाइम इंटरवल विच इज योर टेन सेकेंड एंड डी ई इज द डिफरेंस इन द वेलोसिटी एट पॉइंट ई इफ यू टेक द पपेंडिकुलर इट इज टेन मीटर पर सेकेंड एंड एट पॉइंट ए इफ यू टेक दैट पपेंडिकुलर इट इज फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड सो टेन मीटर पर सेकेंड माइनस फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड दैट गिव्स अस फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड सो इफ यू सब्सिट्यूट द वैल्यूज हाफ इन टू टेन सेकेंड मल्टीप्लाइड बाई फाइव मीटर पर सेकेंड सो दैट गिव्स अस ट्वेंटी फाइव मीटर सो द टोटल डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड बाय दैट ऑब्जेक्ट विल बी गिवन एज एस वन प्लस एस टू विच विल बी लेट अस रिप्रेजेंट एज एस एस विल बी इज इक्वल टू फिफ्टी मीटर प्लस योर ट्वेंटी फाइव मीटर दैट विल गिव अस एज सेवेंटी फाइव मीटर सो द डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड बाय दैट ऑब्जेक्ट इन द टाइम इंटरवल फ्रॉम टेन सेकेंड टू द ट्वेंटी सेकेंड इज योर सेवेंटी फाइव मीटर so this is how we can represent an object which is undergoing uniform acceleration in a straight line so now so far we have expressed object undergoing uniform velocity and object undergoing uniform acceleration what about object undergoing non uniform velocity how does that graph will look like let's have a look so if you look here the graph is a nothing but a zigzag line it's a random line we can say there is no regularity because at different time interval the velocity is different and hence the velocity time graph for an object executing non uniform velocity undergoing non uniform acceleration that will represent in a zigzag line now at this point my dear students as we used the velocity time graph of an object undergoing uniform acceleration to calculate the distance traveled by it in a particular interval of time we can also use that particular graph in order to find out the acceleration of that object how can we do that let's have a look with another situation so here if you can see that graph represents an object which is undergoing uniform acceleration and as we have already discussed and we know that acceleration is nothing but the change in the velocity divided by the change in the time that means the time interval so if we take the example of over here if i want to calculate the acceleration of that object from the fifth second and between the 10th second that means the time interval is 5 second so at the 5th second if you see the point is here the velocity we have represented here is 20 meter per second and at the 10th second if you see the corresponding 
velocity is nothing but your 40 meter per second. So, in order to calculate the acceleration, what we will do? The initial velocity at fifth second is nothing but your 20 meter per second and the final velocity at tenth second is your 40 meter per second. So, what is the difference? 40 minus 20 that is 20 meter per second and that change has taken place in a duration of 5 second. So, change in the time if we take 5 second, the value that you will get is, is equal to 4 meter per second square. That means, the acceleration of that object in this particular graph which is executing a uniform acceleration, that acceleration we got A is equal to 4 meter per second square. So, dear students, this is how we can represent the motion of an object on a graphical method and also we can use it to find out the distance travelled by it and the acceleration of the object. So, at this point, let us find out how much we have understood from this lesson. So, to do that, I have few questions for you which will come in front of your screen, try to solve it by of your own, else I will be giving you the answers. So, let us look at the first question. The graph represents the distance covered by two runner. So, we need to find out which line shows the faster runner, whether the blue line or the brown line or both of are running at the same velocity. So, try to solve it. So, to solve it, if you see the distance or the displacement time graph is given here. So, we need to choose a time interval. So, let us choose a time interval between first second to the fourth second. So, at the fourth second, if you see the distance travelled by the runner which is represented by the brown line is nothing but your 1 meter. And at the same time, the displacement of the runner which is represented by the blue line is your 3 meter. Now, the time interval is same. So, in order to calculate the speed, what we will do? 1 meter divided by 3 second and here also we will divide it by 3 second. So, here the answer that we will get is 1 meter per second, whereas in case of the runner which is represented by the brown line, it will be approximately 0 0.33 meter per second. Now, it is quite evident, clearly understood that the line which is represented by the blue color, that particular runner is moving with a faster rate or with a greater speed. So, the answer will be the blue line represents the runner which is moving with a fast speed. Now, let us move on to another question. So, here is also another graphical question. So, the graph represents the motion of a cycle. So, you need to find out the cycle is travelling at whether uniform velocity or constantly increasing velocity or that is acceleration or constantly decreasing velocity or deacceleration. So, if you see the graph as the time increases, the displacement of the cycle is increasing. It is not uniform, rather it is increasing. That means, we can say that the velocity is constantly increasing or the cycle is constantly accelerating. So, the answer will be constantly increasing velocity or acceleration. Now, let us look at another example or another question. So, the question is what is the quantity which is measured by the area occupied below the velocity time graph? In this module, we had already solved this type of question. So, the area occupied below the velocity time graph represents the distance travelled by that object because velocity into time is nothing but your distance. So, the area occupied below velocity time graph 
विल गिव अस द डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड बाय दैट ऑब्जेक्ट इन अ गिवन इंटरवल ऑफ टाइम सो कमिंग टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाट कैन यू से अबाउट द मोशन ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट हुज डिस्टेंस टाइम ग्राफ इज अ स्ट्रेट लाइन पैरल टू द टाइम एक्सिस इफ द डिस्टेंस टाइम ग्राफ इज स्ट्रेट लाइन पैरल टू द टाइम एक्सिस what can you say about the motion of the object that means at any interval or at any instant of time the distance of the object is remaining the same from the origin the distance is same that means the object is not moving or we can say that object is at rest when that object is at rest the distance time graph will be parallel to the time axis that means the, from origin to that particular point that wherever that object is placed that distance is not changing that means we can say the object is at rest so dear students you solve this kind of question so that you can have a better understanding of the concept the rest we'll discuss in the next module till then take care thank you